Welcome back to the Neuroscience Meets Social and Emotional Learning podcast for episode number 160. With Chrissy Barth, an integrative and functional sports registered dietitian and mind body expert in the field of nutrition, who is passionate about teaching others about optimal health and performance by taking the confusion out of nutrition. I'm Andrea Samadhi, author and educator from Toronto, Canada, now in Arizona, and like many of our listeners have been fascinated with learning and understanding the science behind high performance strategies in our schools, our sports and workplace environments with ideas that we can all use, understand and implement immediately. I first met Chrissy Barth a couple weeks ago when she was asked to speak at our daughter's gym to help a team of aspiring gymnasts improve their nutrition and be sure that they're fueling their bodies efficiently. I was blown away with her presentation as I've always had in the back of my head, what else can I learn to help my family and others when it comes to those top five health staples that we've been talking about on this podcast. So I immediately asked Chrissy to join us. A bit more about Chrissy. She's the founder and CEO of Live Breathe Nutrition LLC and Nutrition Lifestyle Education. It's a nutrition coaching and consulting practice in Phoenix, Arizona, where she serves as a nutrition consultant to sports teams, spas, behavioral health programs, medical and training facilities, corporations, and local and national media outlets serving as a media spokesperson. Chrissy is also a lecturer at Arizona State University where she teaches sports nutrition, complementary health care, human nutrition, and entrepreneurship, and serves as a mentor to many aspiring future registered dietitians. Chrissy has received many awards, but the single highest mark of achievement as a dietitian she's received is recognition as Arizona's Young Dietitian of the Year. Chrissy enjoys giving back to her community and volunteers her time educating youth athletes on the benefits of sports nutrition. Let's meet Chrissy Barth and sharpen our saw with regards to high performance fuel. Welcome Chrissy Barth. I want to thank you so much for speaking with me today. I know it's busy times with back to school and sports in full swing. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Oh, absolutely. You know, I had such a wonderful time the other day at Aspire Gym when I saw that they were doing a class on nutrition. It's definitely an area of weakness. I, I see some flaws in our home. And so it was Friday night and I thought that's where we're going to be Friday night. We're going to be in the bleachers at the gym. So, you know, I was in the back row, but taking notes and learned so much. And Chrissy, I picked up from you, though, that you worked in Major League Baseball. So did you consult with the Diamondbacks here in Arizona? Yeah, I did um, consult with a variety of sports teams. The Diamondbacks were not one of those teams. Okay. I would love to work with them, but no, I, I, there were other teams that actually um, have spring training headquarters here. So, um, but it wasn't the D-backs. Got it. Got it. Okay. So I picked up so much from that high performance fuel presentation, and I wanted to give our listeners an overview of this presentation since we've been focused on this podcast on the top five health staples, and I put them in the show notes. It's basically nutrition is one of them, and it's one that I haven't had a deep dive into. So can you share what you think are the six key optimal performance um, items for those who have athletes in their home or even just regular people who want to eat like an athlete what do you think we should all know about fuel sure absolutely and these six keys all work together so that's why we really can't leave any one of them out because they all benefit each other so i would say the first key is hydration so it's really important that we stay well hydrated because we are about 70 percent water and so if we're dehydrated especially as an athlete that can greatly decrease our performance by up to 25%. So always carry a water bottle with you, stay well hydrated. Um, the second key is 
making sure that what you're eating is balanced and also getting in good variety. So balance basically meaning that getting in the right amount of macronutrients for you. And each one of us is so individualized. So what works for one might not work for somebody else, but really individualizing carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. And then when it comes to variety, getting in a good variety is so important too. A lot of people eat the same thing all the time. And when, when we do that, we're going to miss out on key nutrients like vitamins and minerals, which can then, if we're deficient in anything that can greatly affect our performance. So getting in good variety is also very important. The other thing, which is really important is getting in the right amount of energy. Um, so if an athlete is looking to maintain their weight, um, gain weight, lose weight, if you're not consuming enough nutrition, you're not going to reach your goal. So energy intake is the, the third key. And then nutrient timing. So when we consume certain nutrients is really important. Probably most important, I would say is post workout. So um, as athletes or anybody who is working out on a on a daily basis, I would say it's really important to make sure that you refuel with, within that first hour of exercise. If you wait longer than that, especially like I said, if you're exercising every single day and doing a lot of hard workouts, you're only going to set yourself up for possibly getting sick and injured. Um, and then the other um, key is meal frequency. So I always tell my athletes that, you know, eating is like a full-time job. And so making sure that they're consuming three balanced meals a day and then snacks in between. And again, it, it varies from person to person, but I would say making sure if you're very active, to fuel every two and a half to three hours. You don't want to go longer than five hours between your meals, because if you do, it can really affect metabolism, um, focus, performance, things of that sort. And then lastly, our su um, supplementation. So when it comes to supplements, I'm not a supplement first and then fuel, but it's fuel first, build that healthy foundation and then supplement accordingly as athletes, especially those that are pretty competitive and that are at either at the collegiate level, especially professional athletes. When you are choosing supplements, you want to make sure that the supplement has been tested for banned substances. So looking for that NSF certified for sport or informed sport. Got it. Everything that you had said in that overview was powerful for my young girls aged 11 and 9. They actually took away so much from your presentation and it's been on the discussion uh, every meal that we have. They actually come and show me, um, you know, here's what I'm eating and they break down. Here's, you know, my protein and my carbs and and they've been talking about hydration a lot that, you know, those six key um, point that you had mentioned um, because in Arizona we can get so so thirsty and they're always out of water and you know they're mentioning well I ran out of water and so we're always trying to find ways to have extra water to make sure we don't um, run out but the next question is powerful because this is where my girls learned um, they paid attention and then they started to implement the ideas and so you as a presenter I know that that would make you feel good that actually kids were talking about what you were teaching them. Um, they were looking at each other when you were saying, you know, are you under fueling? Um, if you're not eating enough, then that's affecting your performance because they all talk about their uh, performance and where they're going off. Maybe their legs are going the wrong way. I hear them in the car, we carpool. Them. So we hear what they're talking about and they're talking about their performance. And so now they've added to the conversation, well, have you fueled, are you, are you hydrated? And so I know that would make you feel good, but can you break down what should be on an athlete's plate for everyone listening? Um, you know, the grains, the carbs, the fruits and the veggies, what, mm -hmm. what should be on the whole plate? Sure. Um, well, I just want to say, I'm so grateful that your, that your daughters are talking about it because that was the whole point too. So I'm excited about that. It makes me so happy. Um, but when it comes to their, their plates, I would say, and my whole philosophy too, is keeping things as simple and attainable as possible. So I like, if you had a plate in front of you, I like to kind of think of like three steps. So, or like breaking your plate into three different um, portions and each portion has its own function. So for the first one, step one, a lot of our natural anti-inflammatories antioxidant rich foods. So lots of vitamins, minerals, fiber, all that is really good for performance and recovery. And so that would be like our fruits, vegetables, and our nutrient rich fats. So a lot of our oils, like 
um, olive oil, avocado oil, avocado, nut seeds, things of that sort. Um, get, when we think about fruits and vegetables, getting in a good variety of color because each color has its own certain health benefit. Um, so the more color on your plate, the better you're going to feel and perform. Um, the second step is going to be all of our starchy foods. So that would be a lot of our grain foods, starchy vegetables like corn, peas, potato, beets, carrots, things of that sort. Um, and I would say, depending upon how active the athlete is. So if we think about like a moderate training day or a hard training day, the harder the training day is, the more carbs the athlete needs. And I always emphasize those types of carbs or starchy foods that are higher in fiber. Fiber is really good. It's, it's food for our, our good gut bacteria. And we know that our bodies are primarily bacteria. And so we have to make sure that we're fueling that good gut bacteria because that can affect our our physical performance and our mental performance too. So getting in fiber rich um, carbohydrates like whole grain breads, brown rice, whole wheat pasta, quinoa, and then of course, uh, starchy vegetables and beans and lentils. And then um, the benefit of that too is for primary um, energy for both the body and the brain. Um, and then lastly is protein. So protein really doesn't change upon how active the person is, um, as long as we're getting in protein throughout the day. But I usually like to think about for protein about the size of your open palm. So for female athletes, about three to four ounces, male athletes, four to six ounces, it will vary depending upon the age of the athlete as well, and one's body weight. Um, but protein is so important too. So getting in a good variety of proteins. So from dairy sources to plant sources to animal sources, and really emphasizing those types of proteins that are leaner. If they're leaner, they're going to be higher in protein or higher in yeah, higher in protein, lower in, in fat. Got it. Well, what about fats? Because I know that it's crazy to me that if you ask someone to name off some of the um, items that they eat that are proteins or carbs, they can list a long list. But if you ask them, you know, list some healthy fats, I, I bet you they can't list like more than five. And I know like it was a big paradigm shift for me a few years ago to go from that it's okay to eat fats and butters and, and uh, coconut oil and things like that. Um, fats don't make you fat. But what do you notice with fat? Are people starting to see the benefits? And are there good fats versus bad fats? that we should mm -hmm. know about. Sure. Great question. And this is probably one of the reasons why I became a dietitian because I grew up during the age of where fats were bad. If you eat fat, you're going to get fat and it's not true. Um, so I like to think about those types of fats that we want to eat more of and those that we want to eat less of. And what's interesting is as my career as a dietitian, I've been a dietitian now for gosh, since 2000, Four, I think, or 2002, I forget when, but it's yeah. been a long time. And over the years, I've really kind of expanded my eat more types of fats. So obviously when it comes to fat, um, it satiates us, it adds flavor to the food, it fills us up, it adds more balance. We need fats in our diet to absorb key nutrients like vitamins A, D, E, and K. So if you're skipping out on fats, you're not going to absorb all those um, vitamins and minerals. And so for example, if somebody was having a big salad for lunch or dinner, and there was no fat in the salad, all those vitamins and minerals in that salad are not going to be properly metabolized by the body. So it's really important to get in some kind of fat too. Um, so I would say those fats to eat more of first and foremost would be all the unsaturated fats. So a lot of our plant fats, so like nuts, seeds, avocado, um, certain oils like canola oil, avocado oil, um, other nut oils like walnut oil for like salad dressings and things of that sort. Um, and then also when it comes to butter, I always say go for grass fed butter. Grass fed butter has more omega threes in it and also coconut and think coconut in moderation is okay. And then fatty fish. Um, so a lot of like fatty fish, like salmon, tuna, rich in omega threes. We know that our diets are pretty low in omega threes. Mm -hmm. So especially getting them in the fatty fish or even like plant um, omega threes, like chia seeds, ground flax seeds, walnuts, things of that sort. So all those fats, eating more of those, the eating less types of fats, I would say anything that's processed or that will say trans fat or what trans fats are basically, it's a, it's a preservative and it's partially hydrogenated and then some kind of vegetable oil. So that I would say eat as little as possible, um, but all the other fats they're fine to have in moderation, but really emphasizing all the unsaturated fats. 
Got it. Got it. Well, this next one hit home for our household and it's a crazy one because this was the big one when they looked at each other and they're like, we're under fueling. So we're not getting enough fuel. And then you talked a little bit about what happens to their bodies if they're not getting enough fuel. Um, where does it show up for an athlete if they're not fueling enough? Mm -hmm, sure. Great question. So for under fueling, and it could be very um, individualized for athlete to athlete, but if an athlete is not getting in enough energy to support their performance, that can come up with, I mean, gosh, I would say initially would be their performance will be impaired. Um, so they're not going to feel as well. They might, it, it might affect their brain. So they might feel more tired, moody, um, their thinking or cognitive function might be impaired as well. And then also when it, if they continue to, to under fuel that can set themselves up for getting sick and ultimately injured. So a lot of the athletes that I'll get refer, um, referrals for are those athletes that are, that keep on getting injured. And when we look in deeper into why they're getting injured, they're not eating enough nutrition to sustain their performance. So a lot of these athletes are young athletes and they're performing for like hours and hours every single day, um, day after day. And so by not consuming enough, it's, you're really going to set yourself up for getting sick and injured. Yeah. And you said something that was pretty powerful. Can you explain what happens to our muscles after we work out and then how do we prime them for performance the next day? Mm -hmm. Sure. So um, post-workout is, is the best opportunity to, to replenish or, re, or refuel um, our muscles. And so if you think of like post-workout, your muscle is kind of looking like a, a wet sponge. Um, you want to replete or replenish um, as soon as possible because that wet sponge or your muscles are going to dry out, making it more difficult to refuel, thereby impairing your performance the next day. So I would say the best time to refuel for an athlete is right after you work out up to an hour. So if an athlete is finishing working out or training and their next meal isn't going to be until like two or three hours, I always say bring a snack. So some kind of combination of a carb and protein um, to have on, on hand, because by not doing that, you're going to get really tired, fatigued, and you're not going to perform at your best the next day. Got it. I know that hit home for, for a lot of the girls that, you know, you were talking to. Um, what about some examples of a really good breakfast for us to eat? Sure. So a really good breakfast. And I always say eating something is better than nothing. So even if it's like leftover pizza from last night, that's better than running on empty. So what I always encourage my athletes to do or people in general is to get in a good combination of fiber rich carbohydrates with protein and some fat. So some of my quick and easy go to breakfasts would be um, Greek yogurt with granola and berries, or if you have some time making some eggs, maybe a, an, an omelet or a um, an omelet with um, in a tortilla, some veggies and salsa or something like that. Or um, if you're running on the go, maybe packing a peanut butter and jelly sandwich as you run out the door. Um, but something is better than nothing. But try to make sure you get in a good combination of fiber and, and with protein because fiber and protein together will give you that extended energy. Got it. And what about some examples of lunches and dinners? Sure. So lunch and dinner are very similar to breakfast. I would say the only difference would be try to get in more vegetables because vegetables are really important. Vegetables have a lot of fiber. That fiber is nutrition for the good gut bacteria. You also get in lots of vitamins and minerals. I think the average person when it comes to fruits and vegetables every day gets in about one to two servings. And usually it's like ketchup and French fries, which really don't count. So I would say whatever you're consuming in terms of fruits and vegetables now, try to double that because it's so important to eat enough fruits and vegetables. Um, but in addition to the, to the fruits and vegetables, I would say, again, getting in that fiber protein combination. So some quick and easy lunch ideas, sandwiches are great. And you can be very creative with your sandwich. So you could add in different types of, of grains, like from whole grain bread to tortillas, to pitas and things of that sort, and adding different like fillers, like nut butters or turkey, ham, cheese, hummus, something of that sort. Um, and then for dinner, again, make Making sure that your plate is balanced. So getting in a protein, whether that be fish, chicken, turkey, um, beef, a, a really good source of carbohydrate, like rice, pasta, potato, sweet potato, and then a vegetable. And then of course, getting in a, a, a nutrient rich type of fat too is important. 
Got it. And we've been talking a lot about inflammation on this podcast. It's often found in the body as a precursor to some of the major diseases. Can you name some of the natural anti-inflammatory foods? This was a powerful part of your presentation. Mm -hmm. Sure. So all the really good anti-inflammatory foods that fight inflammation would be really um, sticking to real food. So foods that are closest to nature. So fruits, vegetables, um, lots of vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, fiber, um, your, all your whole grains. Um, and really, I, I would say emphasizing, I know gluten is, is a big topic today. And I think why some people might be sensitive to gluten is because gluten tends to have a lot of, um, glyphosates in that, in, um, gluten. So they're, they're, they're sprayed heavily with like, um, with, with uh, pesticides. So I'm not against gluten, but trying to add in more variety. So choosing gluten-free grains like quinoa, brown rice, black rice, wild rice, and then starchy vegetables like sweet potatoes, beets, carrots, and things of that sort. Um, other natural anti-inflammatories, I love, um, herbs and spices. So herbs and spices actually probably have more um, anti-inflammatory agents in them, as opposed to fruits and vegetables. Both are important. Both are, are, are good to get in, but cooking with, with more herbs and spices. Um, other ones, I mean, dark chocolate is a, is a good anti-inflammatory source. However, too much isn't the best thing to do. So about like an, an ounce a day. And I always say at least 65 to 70% cacao content would be good as well. Um, a great beverage to drink, um, in addition to water would be green tea is also really good in um, anti-inflammatories. And lastly, and this oftentimes gets overlooked, it's not a food, but it's, it's a critical component to living your best life. And that is getting quality sleep. And so a lot of people are, do not get enough sleep and especially good quality sleep. So if we're not getting good sleep, that's going to affect our energy levels the next day and probably our food choices too, because we're so tired that we think we need sugar to kind of like pick us up. But in reality, we need more sleep. So sleep is really important. And depending upon your age, anywhere from like seven to 10 hours a night is what is how much we need the, the younger kids, more adults, I would say about seven to eight hours of good quality sleep a night. Yeah. And this is a hard one with the kids who train because they train and then they've got homework when they get home. And so we're, we're, it's more noticing it's cutting into their sleep time and mm -hmm. we've got to find different strategies to get homework done. So it, you know, this is all such powerful information. I just want to thank you so much. Um, there is one other question that I wonder if, if you could answer, because I noticed on some of your slides uh, that you had Gatorade and my kids turned around the minute that there was Gatorade um, on one of the slides, they shot their heads around and they're looking at me and saying, you know, she's got Gatorade up there. But, and I've always thought, it not it just a drink with sugar and dye, but why would you include Gatorade for athletes? Sure. Really good question. Um, and so I think when it comes to sports drinks, there's a right time to drink sports drinks. I mean, sports drinks are not really meant to eat with all your meals. They're really meant to fuel during your workout, especially for workouts that are more than an hour long. So if you're well fueled, plain water should be fine for that first hour. For every hour thereafter, I do recommend some kind of sports drink. And that the purpose of that is to meet your hydration needs. You also need that quick sugar to kind of like keep your energy levels elevated, your muscles, like staying strong and, and, and supporting you for your, for your training and also electrolytes like sodium, potassium, magnesium. When it comes to Gatorade, um, the good thing about Gatorade is that, the, that they do have an organic, um, Gatorade out there now, which is wonderful. It's made with real sugar, no artificial dyes. I do not like artificial dyes at all. I'm not a, a proponent of those, but other sports strengths that I like, um, body armor, I think is a really good product that comes in body armor, the regular sports strength or body armor light. There's no artificial flavor, sweeteners, dyes. It's a coconut water base. It's packed with key electrolytes like potassium. It tastes really good. I'm a big fan of that. Another company that I like, they're actually local here in Scottsdale, Arizona, and they're called X Endurance. And one of the really great um, fuel sources, either um, pre, during, or post-workout, it's called Fuel 5. And I like that one too, 
because there's no artificial flavors, dye, sweeteners. It actually has stevia in it. It has a variety of different carbohydrate blends in it as well. Also B vitamins, electrolytes. So I would say just be smart about your hydration choices. I mean, I think sports drinks do play a role during your training and competition, um, but not to drink it with every meal. Every now and again, it might be okay to do, but for all your meals, I wouldn't drink um, any kind of sports drink during or with your meals, but when you're training or post-training. Oh, this has been so helpful. It really made a difference in our house. And um, the, the key areas were um, some of the parents in the stands started talking to each other about what they do at home, getting ideas. So you wouldn't have known that, but we're brainstorming with each other, offering ideas, saying, you know, what supplements do you use? Um, because the kids, they, they hate those supplements. You know, they taste awful. And every time I go and buy something, the kids are like, no, I don't like that one. So I'm like, what supplements do you use? And we're all swapping ideas. So it was powerful to have you. I want to thank you so much for coming to the Aspire Gym and helping my girl athletes and then coming on the podcast. Uh, I've learned so much from you. So I just wonder, I'm going to put everything about you in the show notes, your Facebook page, your LinkedIn, but what's your vision? Where are you taking your coaching practice now? Like, what are you doing? If someone looks at your website, what, what could people, how could they reach you and what could they um, learn from you? Mm -hmm. Well, with, as far as my website now, it's actually my new one is being under construction now. So my current one is a little bit outdated, but my new one is really going to focus on um, like brain performance. So um, kind of like encompassing working with um, athletes in sports nutrition, um, also um, athletes specifically recovering from eating disorders too. I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I have a specialty in that area. Um, I've also gotten into an, um, Alzheimer's um, and not only awareness, but um, helping prevent it and also reversing it. Um, there's a phenomenal physician researcher based out of California called um, Dr. Dale Bredesen. And through his teachings and trainings, um, I'm certified through, through his um, training that it, there's so much hope when it comes to Alzheimer's. And so a lot of the things that I've been talking about today with like anti-inflammatory foods also is part of the special um, diet protocol for um, helping reverse Alzheimer's. Um, and then lastly, I would say I'm, I'm really looking more towards getting into like group coaching. So whether that be for executives um, to help their, them perform better at, at the office and then athletes as well. Got it. Well, I'll put everything in the show notes for people listening. They can reach out to you. And I just want to thank you so much. It's powerful information. We should all know it. And like you mentioned, sleep is one of them. We've been talking about sleep, everything you've mentioned, um, Alzheimer's prevention. We've really been diving deep into that. Um, eating disorders isn't something that I've focused on, but it is something I'm very interested in. Back in Toronto, we had an eating disorder house that was built after one of my high school girlfriends that mm. passed away in the late 90s. And wow. so I'm uh, very attached to helping young girls with body image as well. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's all about like education, I think, and just supporting them. And that's why I think it's so important to educate the, these young athletes about how to fuel properly because by not doing so the stories that i hear about what these athletes are going through from whether that be the pressure of coaches or family or peers and it really comes down through education i know that's why i became a dietitian i was an athlete growing up didn't have the best eating habits. I wish I saw a dietitian when I was younger, one that specialized in, in working with athletes, but um, I'm just grateful like where I am right now and I'm able to help um, athletes perform at their best. Well, thank you for doing the work you're doing and we'll keep following you and, and wish you the best in all you're doing. Great, thank you so much. Thank you.